So the next thing on our list is the Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect. So in 1905, Einstein wrote five papers, which each of these papers had a huge impact on physics. Two of these papers, I think, uh, two, yeah, I think so two. Two of these papers had to do with special relativity. Uh, one paper had to do with Brownian motion in which Einstein gave the definitive proof that matter is made out of atoms made out of molecules. And uh, then one of the paper was about describing the photoelectric effect. So Einstein actually uh, contributed directly in the found foundation of quantum mechanics. And uh, uh, of course, you all know that 15, 10 years later, Einstein also uh, was, you know, was instrumental in putting forward the general fear of relativity uh, but can anyone guess what theory or what uh, was the Nobel Prize given for to Einstein? What was the photoelectric, photoelectric effect. effect? Right, exactly. So it was photoelectric effect that, uh, you know, because, you know, I don't think the Nobel Prize committee was brave enough to uh, give out um, a Nobel Prize on either special or general relativity. All right, so what is the photoelectric effect? So if you shine ultraviolet light, say onto a metal, then the metal emits electrons, okay? So this is re entirely reasonable because, you know, the electrons are, you can think of them as somewhat bound inside the, you know, bound inside the metal. So, you know, they're like in a bucket, right? They're in some sort of potential well. And when the electrons actually absorb the radiant energy, you know, they get some energy and they escape. So this is not puzzling. But what was puzzling was that the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, of the emitted electron, was independent of the intensity of the light but it depended on the frequency of the light if Okay, so this is not something we expect from classical physics, right? In classical physics, you know, if we shine a brighter light, what are we doing? We are giving more energy to the system. So we would say, say that, okay, if you give more, if you increase the intensity of light, the electrons maximum, the maximum kinetic energy it can get should increase, right? Instead, what happens is that, you know, when we increase the intensity, more electrons are produced. More electrons are emitted, okay? So the energy that we are providing seems to be distributed amongst more electrons rather than being concentrated in one or two electrons. But each electron, it seems like they have a maximum capacity for 
um, you know, absorbing the light, uh, the, the energy of the light, uh, which is dependent on the frequency of the light. Okay. The other thing is that um, the energy or the maximum energy, I should say, of the emitted electron depends linearly on the frequency with a proportionality constant minus W, which is called the work function. So if I, if you plot, so this is a maximum energy. So if you plot the maximum energy of the emitted electron, okay, then uh, as a um, function of nu, then what you get is that you get a line like this, okay? So here is, there's an intercept here, um, which is minus W. But this is the data point, the data starts here, okay? So how do you explain this? Because classical physics tells us that the more intense, you know, you can think of the W, w that's natural, right? It's, uh, you know, you can think of the metal as some sort of a box, a well, a potential well, and you know, we have filled it up with the electron and you need a threshold energy W for the electron to jump out of the box, right? And that W is called the work function. But more in, but you know, classical physics tells us that if you have a light that is more and more intense, the kinetic energy of the electron is going to be uh, more uh, higher. But here we see that there is a maximum to the kinetic energy. So the way Einstein proposed to solve this was to say that he said that, you know, the energy that the electron can absorb from the light has to be proportional to its frequency. So he said that each quanta of light, that, that the light actually carries energy in packets of H nu. So if I have you know, some light coming with frequency nu, then we can think of it as a quanta, as a packet whose energy is H nu. And what happens is that the electron can actually absorb either the whole packet of light or it cannot absorb it. It cannot absorb half of it, okay? That's what Einstein proposed. So if you think of it in this way, then you know the electrons which are say on this level, on the highest energy level inside the metal, you know, when, they, when that one you know, absorbs this light, it's going to come out but it's going to have to work, it, it'll have to spend W of its absorbed energy into getting out so that the energy of the outcoming electron will be H nu by W. And that is going to be then the maximum energy of an emitted electron. If the electron is coming from more inside, then what happens is that it'll have to do more work than W and therefore its energy will be less than E max, okay? So this is how Einstein was able to, you know, uh, explain the photoelectric effect. Okay? So what is new here? So this is reminiscent of the Planck formula, what? but here the interpretation is very different. Here, what Einstein is saying is that light comes in packets or a quanta of energy 
or light is, you know, um, energy, which depends on its frequency. Uh, it's for, uh, up to H, H nu, okay? Where H is Planck's constant. So, you know, the slope of this curve is the same as Planck's constant. So later, you know, these uh, packets of light named to, uh, came to be known as photons, okay? Um, light quanta. Okay. All right, so this is a uh, photoelectric effect. Do we have any questions? Oh, let me uh, ask, show you the, the apparatus that was used for the photoelectric effect, okay? So what, what they did is that, you know, they had a vacuum chamber, you know, sorry. So you had a vacuum chamber like that. And inside the vacuum chamber, you had a, a cathode and an anode. So, uh, and uh, you had a retarding potential so there was a battery. And then what you did is that you, you know, they shined ultraviolet light on the anode. Or is, yeah. And then, sorry, I didn't want to, okay. Maybe arrow should be like that. And when it hit that, it, it produced electrons but then uh, the electrons would basically, you know, if they reach here, they would get absorbed. And then what they did is that they changed the potential that were applied across the, uh, the two, uh, the anode and the cathode they started at a negative potential, okay? So this was a retarding potential. And the way what happens is that, uh, you know, for a certain retarding potential, there was no current. And by doing, by, by, uh, so, the electrons which had exactly the same or a little bit more energy than the retarding potential, so, so this is the retarding potential, they would be able to reach uh, this other, you know, uh, they would be emitted here, the emitter, and they would be able to get to the absorber. And therefore, they would be able to uh, contribute to the current, okay? So by doing that, they can, you, uh, you know, uh, you can measure the work function, okay? So the work function is essentially given by, you know, uh, this times voltage times uh, the charge of the electron, EV, right? And then when, uh, the potential becomes positive, of course, the current, you know, there is no resistance to the electron getting emitted and therefore, you know, you get the current, uh, steady current. So this is how you measure the work function, okay? Okay, so any questions? I didn't get the part about uh, when it becomes positive, there's no longer any resistance to the steady current. Yeah, oh, yeah. Way. So when it's positive, then, you know, the uh, the electric field is in that way, right? And therefore, the electrons, um, you know, they, and this is a vacuum chamber. So the electrons just flow, you know, whatever electron is produced here, they flow uh, uh, very easily. Whereas if, when the, when the um, uh, electric field is in the opposite direction, then the electrons which are produced here, they get reabsorbed. So they don't contribute to a current. Only the electrons with the very large, the largest uh, maximum uh, kinetic energy can, pro can make over here. But they can only make it over here as long as the 
potential difference between these two point is greater, uh, sorry, is smaller than the uh, work function divided by E, right? And that's how you find the work function, right? Where the current actually goes to zero. Got it. Okay. It's, so a, it's a clever the, experiment. So what is the use of the battery and uh, would the photoelectric effect work without the battery? Uh, yes, of course it would work, but you wouldn't be able to measure the work function. The battery controls the, the strength of the electric field and the direction. So it's actually a kind of a, you know, a, um, a variable battery. So the battery is used to measure the electrons flow or, and from that we find the work function. Well, no, the, you, you have an, uh, an, an ammeter here, which measures the, uh, the current electron flow, but the battery is used to produce the electric fields. You know, the, so there's an electric field here, right? Between the, the anode and the cathode, right? Yes. And the battery uh, produces that electric field and controls its intensity and direction. Okay, understood, thanks. Anyone else? Have, do you have any questions? No, sir, not yet. Okay, so I will post this maybe tonight. I probably won't be able to do it tonight. I'm uh, very busy, but tomorrow, of course, by tomorrow. Okay. Uh, sir, by the the deadline for the pop quizzes for this lecture, will it be until the next class? Uh, was it? I, I forgot. When did I give it? it was this class or next class? Um, usually, uh, you the way it happened before in the stat meeting, it was like uh, when you post the lectures, the pop quizzes have got, uh, we get a deadline until the next class. So I was just asking if it yeah, I'm not very particular about month. that. I, I will change the the deadline. And also, as I said, there was a mistake in the pop quiz, so I will fix that. Okay. Sir. And thanks to everyone who pointed it out to me. Okay. Any other questions or comments?